What's up, you guys? Thank you for clicking on this video. So as you can tell by the title, we have some news to cover. So Toys R Us uh, here on YouTube, I'll uh, link the video in the description of this video. He did an interview with Evan and Mark uh, from the Hasbro Transformers team, and they gave a lot of interesting answers. There's a lot of bullet points here that uh, people on TFW put up. I'm going to read them and give you guys my thoughts on them as always. So let's start off here. Beat MP10 was the goal with Studio Series 86 Commander Optimus Prime. Knight Rider collaboration wasn't made with the goal of scaling with anything. A Hasbro designer named Brian who has worked at Hasbro for 30 years is the one who did Knight Rider. So that's interesting with Knight Rider there. That's pretty cool that they let somebody else design that. That's been a Hasbro veteran at the company. Um, and the whole scaling thing with collaborations, you could kind of already infer that. You know, there really isn't no sense of scaling, honestly, unless if they're like remolding something from a previous mold that came from the Generations line, like what they did with Dracula or the Ectotron, stuff like that. Um, so that makes sense. And uh, you could definitely tell with the 86 Commander Optimus Prime that the goal was to either match what MP10 did or beat it. Uh, and essentially that's what they said here. Uh, MP10, that was a while ago. That was over 10 years ago. I, I would have thought they would have been going for more of the recent MP Optimus Prime figures, but that ties into the thing that Hasbro's all about, their whole business strategy of not wanting to do the perfect version of the character right away. So this leads into, hey, we're going to be getting another G1 Optimus Prime, either Leader Class or Commander Class, uh, not too far from now, I'd assume. Four, five, six, seven years from now, I'd say. So <laughs> that's an indication of things ain't over yet with the G1 Optimus Prime. But uh, next up here, we got Evan isn't a fan of old Fortress Maximus. Uh, the Titan class, a lot of brands have come to Hasbro for collaborations. Certain ones get pushed forward based off of what the Transformers team thinks would work best for the year. Debating on what to do with cardboard backgrounds since their research indicated that people don't use them much. That's, uh, that, may, that, that kind of points to um, what people usually say on social media, whether it's YouTube videos or Instagram, uh, here's the backdrop, even though I'm not going to use it, or I'm just going to throw it out or put it in a bin. That's basically what <laughs> almost everybody says on social media. So that makes sense that they already know that kind of uh, info on whether or not the backdrops for the Studio Series figures are useful or not. But in the same token, I have seen a lot of people that really do like those backdrops and wouldn't really want them to go away. They like to use them on their displays or for photos or what have you. So it's kind of, um, you know, they got to be careful with what they do there if they really are thinking of getting rid of the backdrops for Studio Series. Uh, and the whole collaboration thing, it would be really cool to branch out with some other brands, like get some Star Wars Transformers, Marvel ones like we did back in the day. Like That was like 15, 20 years ago now, which is crazy. The old Fortress Maximus Titan class figure, I totally agree with Evan. That figure is super outdated. It's based off of the Metroplex body mold, I'm pretty sure, which came out over 10 years ago now. I think it was like 11, 12 years ago now, which is insane. Time flies so fast. So yeah, it's got no ankle pivot. It's, it's missing some of those key articulation points that we've gotten with more recent uh, Titan class figures the past five, six years so i think it would be really nice to get an updated fortress maximus down the line even though it's probably not going to be soon since they just reissued the uh, titans return version which with what evan said here doesn't really make any sense maybe they did pitch a new titan class fortress maximus and the powers of that be were like no just reissue the titans return one that's probably what happened but who knows what what uh, what the whole talk was over at hasbro with the reissue uh but Next up here, talked about creating new flight stands. Comic stuff won't come to Studio Series until SS86 is mostly finished. If it happens, it'll be in something like Legacy. Evan names Nautica and Riptide as characters he wants to do. 
flight stands from Hasbro, I haven't really been too big of a fan of, honestly. But if they do come up, if they do come out with some better designs to me personally, I don't know. Maybe I will get them. I already have a ton of flight stands from other companies, though. So in the comic stuff, this is interesting because the last time they did talk about this. Uh, they were talking about putting it in Studio Series, but uh, it seems like Evan here is now talking about putting it in Legacy instead. So I don't know what their final decision is going to be one day once they do decide to do comic stuff. Uh, they already have been doing comic sublines and comic characters within Generations and Legacy. So not surprising this answer, but it is kind of strange since they've already teased in the past that they did want to put comic stuff within Studio Series. But hey, I really don't care what line they put it in as long as we get new comic figures, a new Nautica and Riptide would be awesome among the rest of the DJD and some other comic original characters. Next up here we got Mark has plans for more wreckers, though most on the back burner. Rack and Ruin is the, is the one specifically he wants to do. Capsules are always envisioned as one-year programs. If they do well is when they consider to do more, though with development it takes two years. So, yeah, that, that pans out with capsules. It's if you follow the pattern of sublines, that's basically what the whole thinking is. Um, so, yeah, it would be cool to see part twos for some of these sublines because there's a lot of characters to get in some of these that we've gotten the past few years that uh, we haven't had yet. And it would be really cool to get updates or first ever figures for some of these characters. And Wreckers, I've been talking about this on and off the last couple of years. Rack and Ruin would be absolutely amazing to get. We are long overdue for a Rack and Ruin, the first Rack and Ruin Generations figure to ever be made. We did have that Cyberverse figure a few years ago, even though that was a gimmick figure. So that doesn't really count towards more of a collector's edition figure from Hasbro. So yeah, Rack and Ruin, give us a new broadside. Um, who else could they do from the records? I don't know. There's so many different characters. Tough to think about off the off the dome here. But next here we got Devastator will show off in some form at PulseCon. Original plans was to spread Devastator across two years, but now the goal is five to six months. They learned from Menasaur based off how breakdown well into a what is up with the English here? Some of the writing on this TFW article is, is a little hard to read. Menasaur based off how Breakdown well into a later wave than they wanted and was harder to get. That was a little jarring to read, but I see what they're saying here. Devastator across two years. Honestly, that sounds pretty rough. We wouldn't get a complete Devastator until 2027. That is a bit much, so I'm glad we're getting it complete in less than a year next year. So that makes me even more hyped, hyped for this figure. And especially with them learning from what they did with Menasaur a couple years ago. That sounds nice that they're sort of taking what happened with Breakdown and him being extremely hard to find right now. And sort of uh, trying to avoid that with Devastator here. Even though that it's probably going to be inevitable that some of these figures or one of them is going to be extremely hard to find for the next couple years until they do a new one or until they reissue it. It always happens. So, But at least we know that they're trying to crack down on that, which is nice to hear. And the fact that we're going to be seeing Devastator in full at PulseCon, which I think is like a month or two away at, or something like that, that is freaking insane. I cannot wait to see a new Devastator. Oh, man. I have been wanting a new Devastator for a while now. The Combiner Wars one I always wanted since I was younger, but uh, I just never got the chance to get it. And honestly, I really don't like how that figure is aged. A lot of the engineering, um, you know, it breaks easy. It's missing some of the care articulation that we know these figures to have the last five years. So so it's nice to see that we're getting an update with some more modern and new engineering on these guys because they really do need it in my opinion. Other bullet points we got here are recommendations from internal management are to show off combiners all at once, trying to figure out a system to make most of the pieces available at once. No trumpets for the Constructicons. It was planned at one point though. 
Still a lot of can- candidates for Titan class. Hisui wants to do grandis. Mark thinks broadside would fit. The whole Titan class thing. I've been, I've seen people online the last few months talking about, oh, they're running out of ideas for Titan class. And anytime I read a comment like this, I'm like, what in the absolute hell are you talking about? There are so many characters that we still need. All of the build team from, or not the build team, that's R.I.D. 2001. I'm talking about, um... Ah, oh, shoot. I'm trying to blink on the name of that Cybertronian race from the Cybertron show. They did Metroplex a couple of years ago. We need a uh, drill bit, the mini cons. We need quick mix, all those characters done. Uh, and of course, they're mentioning here Grandis and Broadside. That would be absolutely amazing, especially Grandis. If y'all know, <laughs> I'm a huge animated fan, so seeing a Grandis done finally from Hasbro, I could put him with some of the animated figures that Hasbro's doing, and probably I'll, I'll just put him with my animated shelf too, because I would, I would kill for a Grandis. Seeing him uh, get done finally is like <laughs> one of my dreams coming true with Transformers and Hasbro. And Broadside, he would be amazing too. I would be down for him as well i would definitely get a broadside titan class especially to help fill out the wreckers because the titans are turned broadside really didn't age well and it's not really the design i want like i know they're going for the classic marvel comics look for him and scaling for him as well but I always thought of Broadside, and I always saw him as a little kid in the Dreamwave and IDW comics as him being this massive character, him turning into this boat, and they did do the IDW or toy accurate head and that Titans Return figure, but everything else is just G1 classic Marvel Comics broadside. I really want them to delve into that uh, Dreamwave or IDW modern design, which in Titan class they would have to, because I'm pretty sure broadside never had his modern look in terms of him being a regular sized Transformer, so if they were to do broadside, I definitely think it would be more of a modern look for him from Dreamwave or IDW which would be amazing for me and no trumpets with the constructicons that does kind of suck but if it makes for a better combined mode and better individual robot and vehicle modes i'm totally okay with that and the whole internal management thing on showing combiners all at once that's a bit of an interesting tactic you know i wouldn't think of them (laughs) actually being smart enough the higher ups at hasbro that control the designers and whatnot thinking about actually marketing combiners like that so kudos to them for actually doing something uh i guess you could say cool for once (laughs) because if you if you've been following hasbro news over the years they've made some pretty stupid decisions so that's kind of cool they thought of that but uh yeah that pretty much wraps it up here for what was stated in the interview uh from toys r us's youtube channel again it'll be linked down in the description of this video if you guys want to add actually check out the interview but yeah uh, let me know let me know down in the comments below how do y'all feel about the news that was dropped in this interview all my social medias are linked down below my email is also linked down below if y'all want to hit me up about business inquiries or if you want to message me about whatever Or if you want to subscribe to my new Patreon link down below, it's got tons of exclusive content that I won't see here on YouTube or anywhere else, such as exclusive stop motions, transports photography. You guys get one week access before everybody else here on YouTube to my stop motion films, exclusive music and music snippets from my stop motion films. So if you guys would help support me and help support the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching this video. Catch y'all in the next one. Bye!